no beer today because it's eight o'clock in the morning. Welcome back. So today, all the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years on how to not get lost while backpacking. And first off, I just have to address, there's supposed to be a live meet and greet at Endeavor Brewing this weekend, September's 22nd. I think it's canceled. It's not on my end and I already put out the announcement video, so I kind of feel bad if people aren't going to see this and going to show up. Part of me just wants to just go there and drink beer and hang out with the few people that still come. <laughs> Sorry, but we're gonna try to get something uh, going in the future here for sure. Back to the video. So what inspired this are true events of when I was backpacking and I either got lost or uh, turned around or slightly didn't quite know where I was or where to go. Looking back at those moments, trying to figure out what I did right, what I did wrong, and things that I've learned along the way that can definitely help uh, newer or experienced backpackers. Number one, do not believe other backpackers. When you're on trail, you'll often find yourself uh, with other people coming up to you asking for directions or you'll feel inclined to ask people. I think when you don't know exactly like an area, if you're kind of new there, you assume that other people know that area better than you. And I wouldn't put too much stake in that. I've been burnt at least three times pretty bad by other backpackers giving me advice that was clearly wrong. I think it's easy to get out on the trail and just assume that other people out there really know more than you do. There's times when you're hiking by other groups of people and they'll insist on going one way and you just know it's the other and you know I've went the way that they said because I thought all oh, they you know they must know because he seems pretty sure of himself and it was just completely wrong now it's good to talk to people on the trail see all the options from other people's perspectives but take it with a grain of salt go with your instinct and if you've done the research and you're sure of yourself don't be afraid to tell strangers that. This one time, this one guy, he wanted to run like a half mile down the road to the right when we came to a road crossing. And I was almost positive it was to the left. And I told him that he didn't want to listen. He insisted on going down. And once he took off uh, down the road, I told his, the other party that he was with, like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's this way. We're, we're just gonna go this way. It's like, you wanna be nice about it. You don't wanna like uh, bicker with people out there. Don't follow other backpackers if you just really feel like it's not right. Deep down inside, you feel it. You just feel it. One time I actually got lost in West Virginia. As soon as I pulled up to the trailhead, wasn't quite sure which trailhead I was at because there's like five in a row. And this backpacker came up from the road from the other trailhead and he told me the name of this trail that he came from and it was completely wrong he said the one that was down even further so it led me to believe i was at the complete wrong trailhead and he was sure of himself uh, had i not talked to him i would have drove down there i would have looked at it but because he was just there i believed him and he literally got me lost because I started out at a trailhead that wasn't even a trailhead and started following deer trails. And even though I wasn't like super lost, like I still had my bearings, I had a compass and finally got my map to load on my phone and everything. But uh, dude, I was still like a mile away from where I parked and it took a long time and a night in the woods of not knowing where I was to get back to the trail. Number two, know your exit strategy. So this goes hand in hand with trip preparation. Look at the maps. Uh, don't just bring the maps on your trip without really studying them. You definitely want to sit down and take some time to really figure out where where all the roads are, where all the creek crossings are. This is a good point to really learn how to read a topography map. Topography. I stutter with that word every time I go to say it. Topography or topo. Learn the topo lines. If you look at a map and you see all those lines for elevation and it doesn't really make sense to you, then you don't understand it yet. You got to get to the point where you just look at it and immediately just see a 3D mountain range. When you're out on a trail and you know exactly where the trail is running along a side of ridges and, and mountains and stuff, it helps so much to know where you are to keep your bearings the entire trail. A big one for here in Ohio, we have a lot of roads. So there's always road crossings uh, within the trail. It's very beneficial to know where all these road crossings are, where they can connect. And knowing your exit strategy comes down to if you would have to bail, if someone would break a leg, if anything bad would happen, you have to know where the closest road is and the easiest way to get back to your car, whether it's backtracking or finding another way out of the trail. Now, I don't recommend going off trail like ever, but to be honest, if you live in Ohio and you get lost, you probably shouldn't be in the woods. I'm, I think I'm lost. I don't know where. I if you get lost in Ohio, 
Just walk for 30 minutes and you'll find a road. Study that map before you go out. Number three, download GPS maps. This is something I didn't do for a while. Uh, Gaia, um, All Trails. There's a lot of different apps that you can download and actually get like an interactive, like zoomable map. Zooming is crucial. There's so many times when you look at a map and it'll just show a trail going up to a road and then it'll show the trail coming out the other side of the road. And this is a point I really wanted to bring up during this video. When you are crossing roads, Roads, a lot of times the property boundaries will be different on on the other side of the road so you, the trails often do not just go straight across and like where you can see where you head back in there's so many times we're on a map it looks like you go straight across but really you don't see the trail in front of you you have to go right you got to go left you got to figure out where that trail goes of all the times that I was lost backpacking and lost just meaning like you know, took me five or 10 minutes to figure out where to go. It's always at road crossings or stream or creek crossings. I've been on trails in other states too where I cross streams and I just absolutely cannot find where the trail goes because for some unknown reason, they like to start the trail 50 feet down the creek. Some maps are really bad and if you can't find a digital one, uh, having like an interactive uh, map on your phone that you can zoom in and see actually which way it goes, you're just gonna have to take your time and for that I say, if you're gonna venture in one direction, make sure you keep turning around. Turning around is huge. If you start walking in one direction and you think I'll just go back and, you know, and try that direction, you walk 20, 30 feet and you turn around, it's gonna look different. You, you might not know exactly exactly where you came from, especially if you're like going off trail. So I can't stress enough that when you're walking in a direction, keep turning around and see what that return is going to look like so that when you get to a point when you're out there where you're like, this is definitely not right, you can turn around and things will kind of look familiar. Also, everybody says, you know, you can mark your path, put up things in the trees or, or just mark it somehow with sticks on the ground and stuff. Uh, that can be useful. I've never really had to do that. But laying out some rocks in a pattern, maybe uh, using a stick and drawing a big X, X on the ground, uh, that can work. I will say sometimes if you just, you say, oh, I'll lean the stick against the tree and I'll see it. It's easy to see when you're looking at it, but when you walk 50 feet and come out, come back and try to find it, like it's super hard to find that. So make your, <laughs> make your signs very distinct. Number four is take your time. So this really goes with what I was just saying about the road crossings and the stream crossings. It's super easy to uh, cross one of these areas or, or even if there's a section of trail that's like a fork or something to just kind of assume that one way is the correct way and just go down that path for a mile until you realize you're going the wrong way and then you got to backtrack all that. If you come to an intersection, you're not quite sure you want to slow down, calm yourself, and don't be afraid to get your phone out of your pocket or get your map out and actually check where you are at all of these situations. Sometimes that's a bother. I find myself all the time just just winging it, just, just trying to go without looking at the map, and sometimes that bites you in the ass. Also, I want to go back and when I was talking about downloading maps and reading the topo maps, always keep the sun positioning in mind. Now, maybe you're one of those people that in your everyday life, you don't even know what hemisphere the sun is on. You don't know where it's where it rises. You don't know where it sets. Pay attention where north is like in your day to day life. And when you're backpacking, think about where the sun is. Think about where the sun is going. And during the day, really keep in mind like the direction you're going. Number five. So this is a big one. Research trail conditions. Conditions. This also goes with preparation. There's always people that are doing maintenance on a lot of these trails and a lot of times there's reroutes and stuff that you won't know about. So even if you know the trail or maybe you've been there before, it's good to do a Google search or get on like a National Forest website and see if there's any trail updates or trail changes. There's a trail reroute. Would have been nice to let the people going clockwise know that. I found, especially here in Ohio, when they're doing trail maintenance and they have reroutes, that they're not always clearly defined. And when they tell, they show you a detour just walking down some road, when you walk down a road for two miles and you don't see a trail mark or anything, it's not a comforting feeling. So it's good to know kind of what you're getting into and like how long those detours are gonna be. Number six, I think we're on six. I don't know, I lost count. It's very easy to lose the path in different weather conditions like uh, falling leaves or snow. A lot of inexperienced backpackers, they won't really 
know what to expect if they uh, go out on a trip and then it, they get a foot of snow in the middle of the night or if they go out in uh, the middle of November and have all these leaves. You just want to keep your map really close by. It's nice if it's a very heavily trafficked trail because uh, there'll be a lot of foot traffic through uh, the snow. You'll be able to see where people are going. Leaves make it very difficult. There's a lot of sections where here in Ohio we'll just have a pretty flat uh, forest that, that doesn't really have a clearly defined trail and it's easy to follow in the summer but as soon as the leaves fall very difficult to stay on the trail so you just want to be aware of that do some research figure out like you know how popular is the trail will you be the only people out there oh this is a good one so one of my first trips uh, I was in Pennsylvania Allegheny National Forest set up my tent my tent is green and then I went off to hang a bear bag and I was like deathly afraid of bears <laughs> like the first trip this I think this was the first time I was actually camping in bear country so I wanted to do like a proper bear hang I went really far away from the tent uh, hung the bear line and as I'm walking back I kind of just went in the direction I came from and then I second guess so I would veer a little bit one way and then I'd second guess again and I was zigzagging and there was a point when I kind of had just like a moment like because I really wasn't lost it took me like a minute or two to figure out where I was but uh, there was a, just that moment of like I'm a little bit turned around and I don't see my tent now this was the middle of summer everything's green and my tent is green so my advice is if you have a tent that blends into its surroundings don't wander off too far from that. Even though you think I just walked in a straight line and I'll walk in a straight line back, it gets really confusing. This also goes hand in hand with turning around. So if I would have kept, uh, you know, turning around and checking uh, the direction I was going, maybe I could have figured out uh, an e a little bit easier way to get back to the tent because honestly, I walked past it. I, I literally was walking in a straight line and then I happened to look to my right and like 20 yards through the trees directly to my right. Uh, was my tent. I could have walked past. I think what helped me that is uh, we had a fire going over there. So I think I just kind of saw the smoke and then I saw the uh, tent and I could have yelled out too. Don't be afraid to to yell for help if you're lost. Don't, don't let your pride uh, get the best of you out there. But a big lesson to be learned here is just be very, very careful with venturing off into heavily wooded areas. I know it's the thought is very simple that you just are just gonna go exploring a little bit and come right back, but you're in just a maze of trees. It's easy to see like a big gnarly tree or, or a big rock and think, oh, I'll remember that when I come back. But when you turn around, all the trees and all the rocks look the same. I've gotten turned around and lost enough that I know how to be pretty careful. And when it comes to just bushwhacking through a bunch of trees, I am constantly checking my GPS location. I'm constantly checking my bearings and it's just one of those things you cannot let your guard down even if you're experienced getting lost is not fun i'm sure there's things in this video that i'm not discussing so if you guys have any really good tips on how to not get lost or maybe how to get yourself out of a bind if you are throw them down in the comments below i'm sure everybody would love to read that but the important thing is to just stay calm i know there was one time i was lost and i was getting a little panicky and i started you know, I got my compass out and I literally was going the wrong direction. I, it's just, you're not thinking straight. You have to calm down, think things through. And even though I preach this and I, I talk about this and I know this, when you're in the moment, things change and you make rash decisions that could cost you your life. Quick channel update merchandise is coming that's right official bryce newbold merch the line is done i got samples in the mail they're coming here if they're okay uh it's going up so you guys are going to be able to get some bryce newbold official merch i know you're just dying you're just dying for that but i'll let you guys know whenever that comes up and once again thank you guys for watching couldn't do this without you guys hit that subscribe button notification bell and i'll see you on the next one